nation, I think during the crossover, I can't remember whether it was a crossover or the retreat before the crossover, or even the first month, where I saw the Spirit of the Lord not just going to the deep, but there was this big tree planted in the midst of the waters. Big tree. And the Spirit of the Lord went underneath the tree and began, the Spirit of the Lord began to just permeate and seep through the roots. And suddenly the roots began to light up. It was like it was setting the roots on fire. And as it grew to where the tree was shooting out, I saw thousands and millions of worms. It's like the tree was shooting them out. And they were all coming out dead. Worms, little snakes. Dead. Dead. And as they were Spitted out of that tree from under it, the tree began to glow up. And the glowing began to heal the branches, everything. Everything about that tree changed. And God said, This year, you will kill serpents that distort destinies. No, it was spoken in that bit. I'm just recapping. For those of you who were there, and I guess many of you were not there though, in Kafan Chan. It was a big meeting, so I can't tell who was there or who was not there. But listen. And God told me it was he was in the business of redeeming. This year he said restoring the crown of Adam. Restoring the thrones of the church. And he said, this year will be year, the year of great riches for the church. He used the word riches. He didn't, he didn't just use the word wealth, a general wealth. He talked, he talked about riches, uncommon riches, raw money, ownership of estates, riches, riches, riches in the real sense of the word. The tree glowed. The tree blows up. God said he will go to every foundation. If your foundation has been poisoned, the snakes there must die. Yeah. And he will, he will cut off. He's not going to prune. He's just going to remove. It's not pruning. It's not a pruning year. It's not a pruning year, so that the old does not grow back. You are either turned into a new tree, or you are not a tree at all. You are not counted in number. It is a year when God is giving a name for himself and a name for his people. He will make them to be honored in the earth. Now, I don't know how God is going to do it. But he who said he will do it, he will do it. Come stand up on our feet. Can you just begin to speak in tongues for a moment? Just bless him, bless him, bless him. Take it easy with that something, please. Let's find our place in the heavens uh, with the piano. Let's find our place. Yeah, just, just worship Jehovah. Just you want to take a song for us? Let's just bless the Lord. Just, just worship Jehovah. Just worship Jehovah. Just worship Jehovah. Just worship Jehovah. Shake it. Oh, see, I love you. Oh, Rubaka. 
If you know you are a pastor and you know you actually head a ministry or you lead some form of ministry, including our own ordained pastors here. You know you're a businessman who has started turning over something. Not by faith you're about to start. I'm not talking about those who are starters. It's a different matter. And you know you're a politician that is already inside politics. Not you are fitting to enter. Eh? That you are being called. It's not, it's not for those who are being called. Is those who are already in. I want you to step forward and just stand with us here. You are an ordained priest with ministry, a politician that is already inside, not outside. A businessman that is already turning something, turning something. Not the one that is being called. Not the pastor that is being called. You are yet to obey. Not the politician that is being called that is yet to obey. Thank you, Father. Thank you. you. Want to take your song? Go ahead and just take your song one more time. Oh, chicken, oh, chicken, oh, chicken, oh, Oh, I can't do. Oh, chicken, I cannot say that. I knock your ass on You heard my voice <laughs> and you lifted my head. I knock your ass on you heard my voice and you lifted my head. Oh, Jesus, my soul. But I'm a corner. But I'm a corner. Hey! But I'm a corner. Yeah, Jesus. But I'm a corner. But I'm a corner. But I'm a corner. Pasanje kwenga ba, kona matema kona. Ni pasanje zolo ba, matema kona matema kona. Pasanje kwenga ba, matema kona. Are koshita matema kona. Oh, 
afraid of my helper. My helper. I will not be ashamed of my helper. My helper. I will never be afraid of my helper. My helper. I will never walk alone. My helper. My helper. Now listen. When Haman in the Bible, rose up to distort and destroy the destiny of Israel once and for all. It was in this month, this February month we are entering. Historically, it was this month. When Haman rose up to destroy, God raised an Esther and a Modakaya and rewrote the script that Haman had written to trap the destiny of Israel. Today, any of you standing here acting a script that God did not write for you I raise this staff of Moses by this horn of the Lord and I smite your waters in the name of Jesus. I command the yoke of that script to be broken now in Jesus name. I prophesy your release now. Listen. So that you understand why you are here. Moses was born this month, the seventh of Ada, February. Moses died this month, the seventh of Ada. The same day he was born was the same day he died. After he had fulfilled his cycles. This month carries beginning and the end. Today, I want to repeat a second time. And I want the deep in your life to hear. Thus saith the Spirit of the Lord. Whatsoever is not weighed and measured for the man and the woman in destiny that is now overbearing upon them. Let the yoke be broken now. I curse that spirit to let you go. If God had used a man or a woman to promote you till now and the season of that person is over and the person will not let you go and the person, like Laban, is adding more years and saying, serve me more. And the person is becoming a shadow. I break the hand of that person now. I command this season to lift away that person. In the name of Jesus. I want the shuffers to get ready to sound for a moment. I say get ready. I didn't say sound yet.
today I prophesy to the deep whatever has not been born that will take you to your next level or if it already exists and has not been activated in these two months let it be better over your life as you stand before Jehovah and his holy word today every platform Satan has raised up to destroy your life let the earth open up and swallow it up let your life be cut loose now in the name of Jesus today everything which, whose cycle is over in your life anything whose cycle is over in your life including serpents and scorpions and snakes in human and spirit forms I command them to die out of your lives now in the name of Jesus Christ Can you lift up your right hand? Invite the Holy Spirit to go to work now. Tell him to do the things he must do. Tell him to start the full changes, the new cycle. Tell him to graft you into the womb of these two months. February and March or if you want to talk in the Hebrew tongue Ada one and Ada two in the Hebrew tongue they are called Ada one and Ada two that today in this new moon of today let a new you be born today marks a new moon Today marks a new moon. Let your new moon be born. Let a new crown sit upon your head. A new oil. A new face. A new glory. Father, let me be reborn in the spirit. According to your calendar. Let me be reborn into your calendar. Let my life be taken from the hand of man. Let it be put in your hands today. And by your spirit. Command the heavens and the earth concerning me. Starting from now. Let men be ordained to do me service, to do me good, to fulfill my destiny. Let men be ordained. Begin to ask the Lord to ordain men now, anoint men to serve my destiny. Anoint circumstances, anoint the day and the night on my behalf. Let there be a separation, a consecration. Can you tell God, everybody now, tell God, anoint the day and the night over Nigeria and let the yoke of the dragon be broken. Let the life and the rulership and the platforms of Satan be taken out. Let the womb of these two months set judgments that make way for your life. <laughs> Let
Let a new heaven speak over you and a new earth be under your feet. Let a new law and a new covenant rule over your life. I'm giving you the prayer items already. A new law and a new covenant rule over your life. Anything contrary to that new law of the Lord, let it be cut off. Can you tell the Father, Father, set me free from every entanglement of limitations. Set me free. Release me from every oath I have made I should not have made. Release Nigeria from strange vows. As you pray for yourself, pray for Nigeria. Release Nigeria from strange vows. This is a national all. You will now rub your two hands, clasp them together, rub them in agreement, and, and use them to rub your head by yourself. I'm not going to touch you. Only the oil will touch you. So it's you and the covenant of the oil in the prayer you have just prayed. And the Lord will go to walk by that mark. By that mark in your breath, that mark on your head, that mark in your hands. Anything that rises against it that is against God's will, a fire will fall and consume it. So can you stretch out that hand and let me just, the cup, the left, okay, sorry. And as you anoint, you go to your seat, anoint your breath, and then you will clap your two hands, and then anoint your head. You rub your head, not anoint. Channels of the Spirit open up.
Begin to speak in tongues. <laughs> Begin to speak in tongues. Rebo sekele basi. Pantele kento le bost pula kuria hanta yesta. Andele bokuri abahanti akala basanta. Ante rebosi kala ba. Panta le konte le boste keri ahara bahanta rababasanta. Jesus, 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 Gura Sangai, Jesus, Baba, Jesus, Baba, Jesus. of Jesus I prophesy by the oil in your breasts now that the mysteries of existence in heaven and on earth the power of creation that is in the almighty loosen you from every hindrance by that oil set you into your new place by that oil open the gates of the heavens and the earth by that oil open day and night unto you the sun shall not smite you by day nor the witchcraft of the night overrun you i break every form of witchcraft today in the name of jesus
Can you begin to ask the Father from your foundations? From my foundations, separate me. Separate me. Separate me. Separate me. Separate me from my foundations. Let my separation begin. In the name of Jesus. Can you say amen? amen. Now be seated. Be seated. Listen. These are the months when God hides under other things to bless us. Or God disguises. Did you hear what I just said? Those who bless you wouldn't even know it is God. They will just think, nationally, it's natural. Give it to him. They will fight for you. It's after they have crowned you that their eyes will open to see what they have done. Today, let the laws of nature change around your life. Let God disguise under everything you meet. Including your enemies. To affect and influence your destiny forward. I release that hand of God to take hold of you now. And let the earth begin to order your feet. You will not carry yourself anymore. Nature, times and seasons. The Bible says time and chance happened to them all. I anoint time, I anoint time and chance. Under the power of the Holy Ghost. To set you on the course of your destiny. And to fulfill that destiny for your life. I rebuke every other restraint. And I command them to disappear. Receive the visitation of the Holy Spirit now. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. I didn't hear somebody shout amen. These are the two months when people will make laws, change it, make laws, change it. As they make and change and make and change, people are being moved forward through the changes. People are being resituated. People's lives are being redefined. Like we say, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. From now henceforth. The Lord will shepherd you. Yeah. The sheep does not choose where it goes. It's the shepherd that directs it on his path. From now, every day you wake up, you will come under the spell of the shepherd in heaven. Yeah. I say you will come under the spell of the shepherd in heaven. Yeah. The creator of the heavens and the earth. And the rest of your life will be defined by it. I release that strong hand of God. To walk against the popular wind. To establish you in your rightful place. I cancel any law. Can you hold it there please? Let me finish praying. I cancel any law. That will war with you to reverse your life. I command that law to catch fire now. I didn't hear somebody shout amen. I didn't hear somebody shout amen. I didn't hear somebody shout amen. Let me pray the prayer of this season for you. That is found in Isaiah chapter 30 verses 30 to 33. Isaiah 30 verses 30 to 33. <laughs> and the Lord shall cause his glorious voice to be heard in every house and in every covenant spirit. 
and shall show the lightning down of his hand. Anything where God never make to grow for your life, make that thing die now. Let the lightning of the hand of the Lord smite it down. I release that hand into the parliament. I release that hand into the presidency. I release that hand in the marketplaces. I release that hand in the government houses. Let them experience lightning from heaven. Whatever wall God has not raised, let the hand of God push it down in this season. I release that lightning into every political party. Let the hand of God by day and night remove whatever is raised that God has not raised. I didn't hear the people shout with me, Amen. I release that law to rule and control over the affairs of Nigeria and the affairs of your life. Look, look at that. The voice of the Lord shall be heard in your house. It shall be heard in your office. It shall be heard in your music. The voice of the Lord will be breaking every spell that has been set against you. The Bible says, and the Lord shall cause his voice. He will make it. That means it was not there before. He's going to make it to be heard by those who relate with you. So it's not a matter of, it, 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 it's, this is the word. The Lord shall cause, he shall make, he shall his glorious voice. Can you say Heavenly Father? Heavenly Father. I release your voice officially. Your voice officially. To represent me everywhere I enter. <laughs> and to speak first before I speak. And when I speak. Whether it is right or wrong. Whether it is wise or not wise. Interpret it yourself. And let the people hear what you want them to hear. Not what I want them to hear. I hold you to this covenant in my life. And I call upon your spirit this day to seal it. And to establish it as, as an ordinance. That carries my life. That establishes me. From now henceforth. In Jesus name. Can you wave unto that degree and shout amen? amen? What does the Bible say? Put back. It says, and shall show the lightning down of his hand, the lightning down of his hand, with the indignation of his anger, and with the flame of a devouring fire. And what is the reason? With scattering and tempest and hailstone. Anything that is already existing that condemns you. With scattering and hailstones. Let them be scattered out of your life. I take over the souls of other men captive to this prayer. And I say as you speak and you move in those cycles. The Lord will be shaking foundations on your behalf. The Lord will be changing foundations on your behalf. The Lord will establish a new market for your life. In the name of Jesus Christ. I didn't hear somebody say amen. I didn't hear somebody shout amen. I didn't hear somebody shout amen. Put that prayer back on the screen. Verse 31. It says, <laughs> Ah, can you say, Father? Father. I release myself into you, myself into you. To, ride you to ride through you this year, to be established in this year. Every enchantment against me, 
I agree with your word. They shall not prosper. I counsel them in the heavenly places. They are counseled in the earthly places. And the new thing is established over my life. I welcome it in the name of Jesus. Let my season change now. In the name of Jesus Christ. I didn't hear somebody say amen. Shall we read everybody verse 31? For through the voice of the Lord. Shall every Assyrian in my life be beaten down. Which smote with a oh, I release that arrow to answer your enemies in your house. Their rod shall be cut off before you. Their power shall be destroyed before you. In the name of Jesus Christ. I didn't hear somebody say amen. You don't understand. Listen. Put Genesis. We are coming back to conclude. But put Genesis chapter 7 verse 11 on that screen. Then you will understand the issue of this month. The kind of sound. The Bible says in the 600 year of Noah's life. What month? <laughs> what month are we in now? The second month is an altar. It, normally, it's, it's, it has to do with the spirit of agreement, of dominion, of government. Number two, where two or three are gathered, I am there in their midst. In the second month, the seventeenth day of the month, the same day where all the fountains of the great deep broken up and the windows of heaven were opened. Let the windows of heaven find you and open over you now. I release the law of the spirit to rule over the laws of the earth in your life. I command your blessings to open up in the name of Jesus. This is the scripture of the month. Of this next two months. The windows of heaven will find us and open. It may not be raining in other people's life. It will be raining in your own life. Uh, it, your, your covenant is not with other people. Your covenant is the destiny path. God has set your feet to walk. So today, in the name of Jesus, let your feet be connected to that destiny path. Let every laws of your fathers that will not allow you prosper be broken. Can you dust your feet on the ground? Just, just do that dusting. Tonight, I decree every worm that has remained under the root of your life that is eating it up, let that fire of the Holy Ghost burn it out of your life now. So anything that has become a trap, let the trap be burnt by fire. Let it loosen and let your soul go free. And let your mind go free. And let your flesh go free. If you were sick, be healed now. Be healed now. Be healed now. Let the fire burn through now. In the name of Jesus. Somebody shout fire. the mystery of this month. Go back to the Isaiah 30 and go to verse 32. Isaiah 30, 32. It says, and in every place where the grounded staff shall pass, which the Lord shall lay upon him, it shall be with him. <laughs> Can you say, Heavenly Father? Heavenly Father. My name is Emmanuel Nuhukure. <laughs> Establish the grounded staff in my house. And let it make a way for my life. 
Let it burn everything that should be burnt. Let it destroy everything that should be destroyed. Appoint that staff unto me. In the name of Jesus. It's like when you live here, a foreigner will go before you. That foreigner will announce everything God has spoken. If the earth does not hear, that hand of fire will smite them with lightning. How many of you understand the agreement tonight? This is the kind of law, the covenant that covers this coming two months. So it means your business in these two months is going to go back and repair. Every, anything that is damaged, put them back into use. Set your grounds. Prepare your grounds. Reactivate your forces. Reactivate your contacts. Reactivate your structures. The ones that are weak, replace them with new ones. But set a new platform. Because your glory is being announced all over the world. You will need a strong platform to carry you. I am giving you instructions. Go reset your grounds. Like I told them in Kafan Chan, buy your new instrument for work. Anything where you don't hold, you don't decay, including human beings, set them aside. Buy your new instrument for work. Because the harvest is going to be so heavy that it will kill some people who cannot carry it. The weight itself will crush them. So can you change them for strong hands so that the weight does not crush them? Because they can't cope with it. It will be too big for them. How many of you understand what God is doing? There is a wind that is about to blow that is beyond man. Put back that scripture, please. There is a wind. There is a wind. The Bible says, and it shall be, when that staff stands and has finished its work, it shall bring to your life celebration, Amen. singing, Amen. harps, Amen. sounds will begin to flow Amen. in the midst of the battles that God will be fighting. He says, and in battles of shaking will he fight with it, we need fight with that stuff. Battles of shaking. But for every ground he breaks, laughter will come. Yeah. Interestingly, these two months have been called the months of laughter and joy. Yeah. In the Hebrew calendar is the month of the tribe called Nephtali. And Nephtali means sweetness. Sweetness. It means laughter. It means joy. Sweetness brings laughter. It brings peace of mind. It brings calm. Somebody say sweetness. sweetness. That brings calm. That brings peace of mind. Knowing that God is working for you. Can somebody say amen to that? Amen. Put it back on the screen. It says in verse 33. And Tophet. Okay. For, <laughs> for Tophet is ordained. There is an ordained minister of judgment from ancient time. The name of that minister is called Tophet. Now, I don't know how many of you know good English, grammar, well, well. But listen to me. In the Hebrew, the deeper meaning for the word Tophet, it means a criminarium. Crimnarium is where you criminate dead bodies. And the thing don't die already. What did they do? They smell for you. Eh? That will set them on fire, made the smell go with them. Did you hear what you said? I said, every dead spirit that has stayed there to torment and defy your ground, let the fire of the Lord consume them out of the way. Now, look at that scripture. I'm not, I'm not manufacturing anything. <laughs> Go to your vines dictionary. I mean, you will see some of the deeper meanings and dimensions. For Tophet is ordained 
by God. It's an ancient spirit that is ordained by God for times like this that are difficult. For seasons. So, this is the season when politicians are going to consult their herbalist. And some of them are bringing human beings and sacrificing blood, you know, in order to defeat you. Eh? In order to fight. No, some of you like saying to defeat their enemy. Eh, forget that. Now your name then they call, they are not they are your enemy. Eh? They do that in order to defeat you. Eh, you too, consult with the ancient of days. The thing is that you are too lazy. Declare a fast. You know, go kill you. Some of you, the day where you don't get enjoyment, you shall be fast. But from the day you made some money, now others, you they pay to fast for you. It ceases this year. You will be your own high priest. Don't trust the mouth of others because they will be praying for themselves. You know, even when they pray for you to become rich, it's so that they can eat from your riches. Why can't God enrich them directly too? Why must they pray for you to become rich so that they can eat from you? Oh, you don't understand what I'm talking about. <laughs> no. They are not allergic to riches at all. So why are they making themselves allergic? Why are they turning themselves like Peter and James and John did? Oh, let's build three tabernacles for Elias and Jesus and Moses, but none for us. When they didn't know that the shadow of that spirit had already fallen on them. They didn't know that, but they were trying to build for other people. No. As the Lord will bless the master, so will the Lord bless the servant. So will the Lord bless the slave. Everybody shall have his portion of blessing. Uh, my first driver before he died, built his house, had two cars. So early in the morning, 6 or 5.30, he will wake up, you hear him whistling, he's washing his own cars first. Can you imagine a driver with two cars competing with his guy? And in those days, some of the higher classes were 504. He had this beautiful 504. He had another one, either a Corona or a Corolla. Beautiful one that he has dressed inside. So he will wake up, wash his cars before he goes to wash his Ogaska. Did you hear what I just said? So the same way his Ogas sends him on errands, he also sends others on. That is it. I like that kind of driving. Ogas, you did bless. Me self, I did bless. And can I tell you a story? I didn't buy him. I didn't build him the houses. The God he served faithfully. So much that I'll be preaching on the pulpit, my driver will be healing people outside under the tree. Oh, I miss him, Joel. That was his name, Joel. He's a cousin of my present driver. That was why my present driver took over, uh, over from him. Because he saw the man that served me had already built a house. In the village, oh, everybody was praising him. When they asked, what work are you doing? He said, I'm a driver. He said, you are telling lies. And he wasn't doing any business by the side. He was faithful. He kept the covenants and the covenants kept him. I repeat, he kept the covenants and the covenant did what? Have you not read in the Bible when you are faithful over another man's property? Eh? What will happen? God will be faithful over your own. If you are faithful over Nigeria, what Nigeria put in your hands God will be faithful over your own destiny. Nobody can abort your destiny. Nobody. Oh, I just finished telling somebody. I said, you, by the time you finish from the government house, God is commanding that right now. Do the right thing. Go ahead and finish some particular, peculiar projects this year. And then God will secure your future. Because man will not ordinarily take that future and give it to you. And I told them how. 
happened just two days ago. So I am not joking about this. Every servant should be faithful to his master. The reason why you are not blessed or your blessing goes through a basket is that you are stealing from your master and you are giving half measure to him. So our own domestic driver, the one in our house presently, he's finishing his house right now as I'm talking. In Jos, in the capital, inside the city where it is expensive to build. So I'm not telling you story, story. I'm telling you what happens in my household. I'm telling you what happens. And my money, my money, my money. I'm busy building the kingdom that sometimes I forget those who are working with me. But the father who I pray and I ask for their lives. God, I pray for them. I actually pray for them. I do not pray that God should give them safety. I ask God to bless their family. Their children will be governors. Can you imagine me asking God to make my domestic ministers in my house that their children be governors? Then my own children will become with him. Somebody say today, not today. God has enough offices for everybody. He has enough blessings for everybody. He has enough riches for everybody. He says, for Tophet is ordained of old, yea, for the king it is prepared. Are you not a king? Look, it is prepared to serve you against other kings that will come against you. You know, now power versus power. All those who come out to vie for the post of president, none of them is not a senior principality, it's not a a jiga jiga. It's not a big man. So it's, the presidency is the battle of kings. It's not the battle of servants. You will hear a driver say, I want to be president. Have you ever seen that? That one is begging for money. Eh? Because he's not serious. He knows he won't be. He just wants recognition. So that even the president will call him president. Aspiring president. <laughs> Look at that. He says, for Tophet is ordained of old. Yea, for the king it is prepared. He had made it deep. Now, he's now using the word deep. Made it deep and large. The pile thereof is fire and much wood. He's defining Tophet. Fire and much wood. And the breath of the Lord is what is inside that Tophet. The breath of the Lord, like a stream of brimstone, dot kindle it. That means it's the breath of the Lord that is burning the coal, the fire. Did you hear what I just said? Now, which demon can Satan manufacture that can defeat what the breath of the Lord? You know, I told you at the beginning of the year, those of you who were, who were in our meetings, either during the retreat or the crossover, that there is a flame. I saw Jesus stand. The Messiah himself was going to war this year. But the sword they carried was different from the one spoken of in the Bible. The sword was a flame of fire. It was like the one in the Garden of Eden. And he was going to build a habitation for his people this year. And the habitation shall be defended by fire. The flaming sword. Tophet will stand between you. It's because this is the year when they are invoking all kinds of dead bodies to come out. Every dead body, fire go kill them. Yeah. Don't start getting frightened. Just open this scripture and tell the Lord, Lord, today I ordain Tophet to answer these magicians. Now, what some of you don't know I don't have enough time. I've taught that before in the last year. The spirit that killed the firstborn of Egypt was manufactured for that purpose. It's there in the book of Job. Was manufactured for that purpose. Its only work is to kill firstborns. It's there in your Bible. God was not doing any magic. God was only releasing that which was already created for those purposes. 
There are, Tophet is ordained from time for this season. When men call what is bigger and bigger than you to swallow you, then that thing will come to your dormant and find Tophet. In this month of the deep, I release Tophet to stand between you and your enemies. I release the fire of God to stand at your doors. In the name of Jesus Christ. I didn't hear somebody say amen. You want to sit down, sit down. Because I, I am praying and concluding. Man. The time is gone for teaching. I'm just prophesying and saying the things the Lord wants me to say. But it's important that we know. This is not the year when Christians should fear death. You know, I've received a lot of prophecy about death, 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 death. I have to tell somebody to, can you stop that nonsense? <laughs> and I went to Badiomobude. And he said, because he's an old man, obviously he's an old man. As if he's afraid of death. Everybody just prophesied. Every year they prophesied death, death since he turned 70. Every prophet just thinks that it is his turn to die. Why are you so eager to push him to the grave? Dead, 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 dead. I see dead, dead. Anybody who won't beg your money, go see dead first, make you forgive her money. Tell him, pray for me. Don't hire him to pray for you. Tell him, thank you, sir. Uh, can you pray for me and pray blessings? And don't give him money and see whether that dead vision will disappear. He wants to squeeze ego by putting fear into you. Why don't they see death for the poor man? Why is it dead only for successful ministers? It's appointed unto man to die once, including those who prophesy death. After they have finished prophesying, death will come for them also. And in their own day, they can't, they can't run away. Be careful not to say until you really see. Otherwise, what you say will turn back to consume you. That is why we need to clear that ground and make an open field and put light there for days like this. Because I can see them taking chairs to this side, meaning this side is filled up outside already. Uh, let's get the open field there opened up. Let's put a canopy. And let's, this altar this year must be fire. We, we must control the affairs of this nation this year. Now, I haven't said that. God said I should tell, I announced it two days ago in Kafanchan during our winds of the spirit or a week ago God said every tower go anoint the 12 most important streets anoint them as the gates of heaven and release the hand of God to invade the capital 12 major streets whether named after the most important people name them one by one all the streets and release the hand of God to rescue the destiny of Nigeria. And let's see what this year brings. Because this year is a serious year. Every big man, they work out for that street. Did you hear what I said? Their motorcado, their kazo, uh, it doesn't matter. Every big man, they follow one of those streets. God said, anoint 12 streets representing the 12 foundations of the, of the gates in heaven, the new Jerusalem, anoint them to open the gates of Nigeria. Declare a year of release and release the sword to remove the milestones that will not allow Nigeria to move forward. To clear them out of the way. Get ready. The parliamentarians that are coming next year, pray for them. Let God choose them. 
I don't know why my emphasis more is parliamentarians, not presidency. I don't know why. It means God must have taken care of presidency. But because the ones that are coming next year are going to rewrite our contract. So there, may be, there must be people with clarity, vision, and direction. He said they will rewrite Nigeria. They will rewrite the story of Nigeria. They will be forced. That which we couldn't write since independence, they will find themselves writing. I don't know how it's going to happen. So they must be chosen there. And that's why those of you who don't want to return to the house, you better go and pray and find out whether truly God does not want you to go back. Whether to a higher one or, well, I've never seen anybody go to the lower one after they have gone higher. Yeah, but you need to ask God. I've already started anointing people as point of contact. Let them go and I anoint them to say, go and buy. They didn't come to me for that prayer. I discerned God was calling them there. I won't tell you them. And they have the power to win elections. So I know and say, you, go and buy. You must be in the house next year to rewrite the next level in Nigeria's history. Today, I release the hand of God to turn you into the Garden of Eden. To situate you in your rightful place. Yeah. Every worm under your feet. Oh, look, open your eyes. Look at me. Again, this is not the year to fear death. I beg you. Death was not meant for us this year. I beg you, don't ask for it. Don't beg for it. You know, go die. I didn't hear God talk, say dead, go they ravage in church. It's not for the church. God said he will set his throne in the midst of Elam. And that he will go after the chief ones, the way they cause trouble for Elam. Are you a chief one causing trouble? Then you should go and die. So what can be your own with dead? People are, you are so interested in dying that you are always talking about, you saw your dead. Hey, go and die now, we will live for you. Why don't you release the power of God from your mouth and cut off that lying spirit? He can go and wait when your time comes. He, he, you don't go even know when God carry you go. Your enemy will not kill you. Amen. Power is not given to that enemy. Amen. I release the spirit of God in this ancient judgment of Tophet to catch that altar that is insisting you must be in the grave this year. And set that altar on fire in Jesus' name. I didn't hear somebody say amen. amen. I beg you. Why you are talking about that? Don't come near me. Eh? I want to live to save this nation. Because me and my wife. We have removed, received so many prophecies. Who told you we are afraid to die? I thought it should be a joyful thing. <laughs> Like, uh, I don't know who. I don't know if it was Nadia Deboe. Years ago, who said that? You know, we don't want to die. And yet, we want to go to heaven. Then tell you, say, now everybody be a Elijah. No. Can you insist that your purpose for life be fulfilled? You live as long as your message no messenger is supposed to die before his message is finished. I, I, I know, I mean it. Every man's lifespan is attached to purpose. That is why the most dangerous thing in a man's life is to be purposeless. Your enemy is not your enemy. Your purposelessness is your enemy. Make sure you never live your life without a purpose. No year must pass by without a mission. I repeat, no year 
No month must pass by without a mission. You exist to fulfill. Jesus said, unto this was I born. He said, I lay my life freely and I will take it back freely. My life is serving the purpose. No, no. Look, if you are so convinced that I must die this year and Satan, God is telling you that, tell the spirit of death to come quickly. Because maybe God wants to kill it first. God wants to speed in the death of that person. The person don't commit enough iniquity. Make it come die. Because Tophet will be waiting for that person. When I will go, by God's grace, I will know. So don't frighten him with death anyhow. There are some things I, I must see to eat before I go home. And I'm not, I, how many people have prophesied that their debut is dead? It didn't take place. Oh, oh you think even plus him, people don't prophesy is dead? How many people came to retire him directly? And say, step down. And they all died before him. They were retired. No, as far as three, four years ago. So I'm not telling you stories. I'm telling you what I know. Because I'm his son. I'm involved. So why are you talking about what you can control? What is under your power to take care of? By your faithfulness and your righteousness. Ah, have you not seen God increasing the years of other people? When they were supposed to die, God postponed it. Why can't you postpone your own? And add more years of merit. Paul was supposed to die. He was postponed. He enjoyed himself before he died. Oh, some of you don't know that Paul enjoyed himself without even preaching the gospel. Just enjoyed himself before he died. At the end of his years. Oh, some of you don't know that Daniel, years were added to him. Daniel, when he had finished all his manifestations, went and lived amongst his people and waited for death because death couldn't take him with the kings. All the fires they set for him couldn't take him. I pass a decree that if there is God in heaven and your life answers to him, your life will not be cut short. You will fulfill your destiny and fulfill your purpose. I anoint you with the anointing of your purpose. If you don't know it, let it open for you this February. Let it establish you by March. So that you will live for something in Jesus' name. I didn't hear somebody shout, Amen. Dead is not for the church this year. It doesn't mean that Christians will not die. But I'm telling you that the focus of death this year is not for the church. The focus of death this year is the wicked, especially the, the landmark wicked, those ones that are standing at the gates. Now there you go. They, watch what happens this quarter. This quarter, I look. What between now and the end of March? Watch what happens. I announced something like that. I said before the end of January, this, 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 all these things will happen. They have all come to pass. They are still coming to pass because they affect the whole year. The shaking in Mali, the shaking in Burkina Faso, the coup there, the Malians have just expelled the French ambassador. And I was sent an interpretation of the decree they passed a week or two ago, following the prophecies well, that from now, they are going to relate with France on their own terms. Whatever does not benefit their nation, oh yeah, pack your load and that is Africa being reborn. I, God told us that, that how many of you were here when I was preaching about the people that will pave the way and prepare the ground, roll away the stone for the coming of the Messiah. And I mentioned four tribes. I mentioned Issachar. 
They were the ones that went into Canaan. They were the leaders. I mentioned Judah. I mentioned, uh, uh, what do you call it? Not a loon, something loon. Uh, Zebulon. Yes. And then I'm, I mentioned one more. Joshua. And people say, why Joshua? Don't you know, Joshua was the head of Africa. He was the head of the black man. The black race across the world. He was their leader. Joshua was the head of the house of Ephraim and Manasseh. The man who led them into Canaan was born of an Egyptian woman. Great, 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 great grand grandmother in Joseph. Oh, you don't know. And in Israel, you, they count by the mother's side. That is why Jacob had to graft those two children for them to get Israeli names and blood. He had to graft them and they became equal to their father, Joseph. That is Manasseh and Ephraim. Joshua is their offspring. Joshua has the blood of Africa. And as it was in the beginning, so shall it be at the end. So God is going to take away the desolation of Africa from Africa. There are princes that will rise in Africa that will change our story. Princes, 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 leaders. They are the ones I'm calling for for next year in Jesus' name. So there is a prophecy on our lives. And I told you last year that the shakening begins now that will begin to change governments in Africa and change their orientations and change the direction they move and they will survive it. And Mali announces, uh, Mali, when the coup first came, it looked like people were just power hungry. But now we are seeing that they are idealists who knew they seem to know what they want for Africa. Then Burkina Faso. The same thing just last week. Any government God has not set over your life, I overthrow it in these two months. Spiritual and physical. So that your life can begin to find the freedom it should find. Shall we rise up on our feet? Listen. China is a national prayer. So if I talk about other nations, I talk about other nations in an, a national altar. China started its new year today. I prophesied about that new year a few, two Saturdays ago. We put it on our global watch, those who were watching us by internet. Global watch. And the year is the year of the tiger. And all the colors of the tiger they have chosen are royal colors. That means, now, can I tell you something? For those of you who don't know, for the Chinese, the tiger is their lion of the tribe of Judah. They don't have a lion in their symbols to represent them. There is no lion. The highest animal of aggression they have is a tiger. So from the beginning, God had stepped them down. 
to fulfill the purpose of the Messiah. Who is the lion? Listen. It means China is entering into its most, one of the most aggressive moments of its life. When it will aggressively attack and enter into other territories. Aggressively try to take over power. Set its dominions. The policy in China is about to change. It's going to be that of aggression. Watch and see. It was in the last one month I realized that some of these missiles coming out from North Korea, part of the sponsors under loans is the Chinese. Eh? Those, the people don't even have food to eat. So where do they have money to do missile? Nigeria no get missile. We reach parts of North Korea. 150,000 times, thousands of times. And yet we, we know if we do missile. One missile. And these guys are releasing seven per year. Ten per year. Every day releasing missile as if it is food. And they don't have food in North Korea. Who, where are they getting that bottomless pit money from? I used to think it was Japan. You know, since Japan has been banned from doing, they can't create an army to 11 since the World War. Those of you are historical. Germany and Japan have limitations about building armaments. So I thought they were using the North Korea to stockpile their arms, which would have been logical. Then suddenly I realized in my spirit, the dragon spirit had been sponsoring that. And they, are, they have entered into their year. The covenant is being sealed today. The same time we are sealing our own covenant. Today, any tiger that comes after you shall die by the spirit of Tophet that is ordained. Yeah. We put the powers of China under Nigeria. Yeah. They will not overrun our nation in Jesus' name. And I release that same finger of the Messiah to protect the nations of the earth. Wherever the name of the Lord is called, we raise a cry against them in Jesus' name. I was listening to Biden this afternoon and Biden said, whatever Russia has up its sleeves, they are ready for them. Now, he didn't say what he meant by that. He said, we are ready. And he just said it casually. He's one that has been telling people that Russia will go to war in the Ukraine. And he never said anything else. And I was getting irritated by the way he was talking. It was not diplomatic. It's like he was begging Russia to go to war and provoking them to invade the poor Ukrainians. Then only for him to come up today and say they are ready for them. Now, that language carries a lot. I go and watch the television tonight. Maybe they will repeat it and you will hear him again. He said, they are ready for them. Now, how will a man say that they know how to react? They are ready to react. They know what to do. It's like coming the world, don't worry. Arm for arm, fire for fire. We are set for them. Let's pray for this year because it's, it's a destiny changing year. It's a historical year. It's a year. It's a leap year. It's, it's, it's a Sabbath year. It's a leap year for the Jews. If for those of us who don't know, go and check. It's a leap year. That's why we have Ada 1, Ada 2. And this month is supposed to release the calendar of the year. This February and March is supposed to release the calendar for the whole year in people's lives and in nations lives can you stretch out your hands and say heavenly father in the name of jesus create a new heaven over me and a new earth under my feet to dictate my going out and my coming in tonight as i break of your bread and I eat your broken flesh let the secrets of the deep open to me and the yoke of darkness be broken 
Let a new law and a new decree go forth on my behalf. Raising defenses for me everywhere. And turning my portion into gardens of life. In the name of Jesus Christ. I didn't hear somebody say amen. amen. Father, I invoke the spirit of the Messiah. And I call forth the ordinances of the law of heaven according to your oaths and your word today. I ask that your spirit will enter into this flesh and you will unveil the mysteries and the secret places of the lives of those who will eat of you today. And you will command the hidden riches and blessings to open up to them. And from now, their lives shall live by the law of the Spirit. Amen. So today, in the name of Jesus, I activate your power in this flesh. And I thank you for the sacrifice on the cross that enables us to walk the earth. As kings, as priests, and as spirits born of God. We receive the gift of that power. Today, as I break of this flesh, let the seasons be subdued under our feet. Amen. Let the seasons work for us. Amen. Everyone that is ordained for promotion, between now and middle of the year, let them sit in their new place. Amen. We receive this turning of events on our behalf. Amen. In the name of God the Father, Amen. God the Son, Amen. and God the Holy Spirit. Amen. In Jesus' name. Therefore, in the same vein, I hallow the blood. And I invoke the spirit in your world to enter. And I invoke your oaths. That from the dwellings of your ancient place, let the present be lifted up. Amen. Let the heavens sit upon every life to establish all your promises according to your oath. We receive the blessing of the release of the blood. In the name of God the Father. Amen. The word that became flesh. In the name of God the Holy Spirit. In Jesus name. And the people of the Lord say Amen. Amen. Therefore, sanctify you to carry this flesh and blood. I hallow you. By the blood of Jesus, I invoke the Holy Spirit to serve his people the flesh of the Lord. That as they eat, they will become like him and they will walk like him in the name of Jesus. Wash your hands and start serving. Now, listen. I want you to open to Hosea. Just write Hosea. That's the last scripture. Hosea chapter 13. Verses 4 to 6. Yet, note the word, yet, I am the Lord thy God from the land of Egypt, from when you were an unbeliever till now. And thou shalt know no God but me. For there is no Savior beside, verse 5. I did know thee in the wilderness when you were still a rascal. We are still moving anyhow. In the land of great drought. According to their. Now note the word there. Not your pasture. Their pasture. So were they filled. Now I want to stop there. 
I want to ask you, what do you have now at home? What are you worth? What is your net worth? What is your value? Some of you don't have house. You have never had house. You don't have house in the village. You don't have house anywhere. If you died, now only heaven. The one way you get for heaven, I mean they go to. Then go drive away your children from your houses, except if you are paid forever. The question is, what do you have now? As you eat of this flesh, God is going to fill it for you. Now, that's what God is saying here. Your pasture, you have two cars, three. What is your network? Ten houses. You have one in America, one in Dubai. Every Nigerian is owning a house now. One in Europe. Or you don't have any at all. You have a motorcycle. You don't have any at all. Or you have a, a mud house. Or you don't even have a house at all. According to what they were worth, the Lord visited them to be, make them a large field. Now, put that scripture now that I've explained it. Listen. If you need to make peace with God because you have, a, you have been a restless soul, you better make it before you eat this flesh. Because you are about to eat something that will activate the covenant of what we have prayed about today. God will take responsibility for your life. And he will make your life sacred. Nothing can toy with it. Everything that relates with your life is to fulfill your life. How many of you understand the mystery of what you are about to eat? It's an oath with the Lord. It's our first meeting this year in Abuja. And God commanded that you should be grafted into his will for this year. Look at what he says. According to their pasture now, plural, everybody. According to their pasture, their strength, what they had, the little house, the big house. So where they what? You will step out of this place. God will begin to measure what you need now. If you need to start building houses, you will start building houses this year. If you, please go back to the net and follow our... We go through our teachings. You will notice that God said this year is building. Buildings are going on. Even me, I'm about to start one again. You know, somebody said all my life, I'll keep on building. Every year, if I'm not building, something is wrong with me. I'm always building something. Not that the money is there. I don't see it. I don't need to see it. All I need is to, to hear and receive the command. Receive the scroll, how the building should look like. You will wake up tomorrow and see a foundation. And it will be built. Look at this. According to what they had, their pasture, so were they filled. I didn't hear somebody say amen. amen. They were filled. And their heart was exalted because they were filled. And you can see, that means that is the end of a whole sense, sentence and sense and everything in English. Therefore, have they forgotten me because I filled them. I filled them. I filled them. But verse 4 says what? Everybody, put verse 4 on the screen. Yet I am the Lord thy For there is no savior beside me. God said because I gave them plenty they forgot me. Those of you who after you have received him. Have stopped keeping your covenant patterns. Before you break this bread you must repent. For him to take you to the next level. Many of you you are owing God vows you made. That you never kept. You will beg for forgiveness he will restore you. 
you will tell him to forgive you again now before you break bread. Then there are those of you who have labored and labored. It's like you are going in cycle. Nothing has changed. Not even a keke to show for your name. Ah, this year, don't look for keke. Look for big cars. <laughs> look for houses. Because God is going to measure to you according to your pasture. Shall we rise up on our feet? Don't worry. Whether you have the blood or not, or whether you are already holding both the flesh and the blood, if you know you need to reconcile your life and make peace with God, before that thing touches your mouth, about take stock, your stewardship, your life, the gaps that are there, and you want him to fill them for you, take stock. That flesh and blood will be your witness that you are asking, telling God you are sorry, you want to be restored. If you know you want to do that, I want you to leave your seat and come forward. Let's stand there and make it with him directly here. You know you want to reconcile, restore, close gaps, and be restored today. I want you to leave that seat and start moving forward, holding your flesh and blood. Let God pick you from the dust. That is what first Samuel chapter 2, verses 8 and 9. He said he will take the poor from the dust. And he will make them equal with kings. And he will make them the pillars of the wall. So I don't care what your situation with. If you know you want to do some restitutions with God. And say, Baba. In this second month of your government. Ah. Today as you respond. Let the worms in your roots begin to die. Amen. There is there is now therefore no more condemnation. I say let the worms die. Amen. Can you ask him to reconcile you now? Pick me from the dust. Close the gaps. Wash me clean in the blood. Straighten my life out. And today by the spirit of adoption, restore back my testimony. Restore back my glory. Restore back my destiny. Shield me. Tell him to show you mercy. That this flesh and blood will make you whole with his purpose again. That the crown of his life will sit upon your head. Can you tell him to rebuild the broken walls in your life? As he closes the gap, rebuild my broken walls. If it's your prayer life, tell him to restore it. Your study life, your understanding, your revelation. Your signs and wonders, your miracles. Your miraculous life, your song, your voice. Your mantle. Your blessings. Tell him to pick you by the lock of the air and travel with you again. Make you walk out with you. Sorry, if you can manage to kneel down, can you just kneel down? If you can kneel down, kneel down. Can you tell the father, pick me from the dust and don't let the dust swallow me anymore. Take away the power of the dust from eating me up.
kill every canker worm in the dust, spiritual and physical. Release my soul. Restore back my pasture and bless it for me. Feel it for me according to your word tonight. Feel it for me. Make my life full again. I receive the grace of your power and the testimony of the Holy Spirit in my life. Back to my life. Let this flesh and blood testify of me and testify of you in my life. Let it bring healing to my soul. Restoration to my life and forgiveness of sins. I receive the blessing of Jehovah according to the ordinances of your word. So let me be blessed. I receive healing for my body and healing for my destiny. Restoration for my life and the fulfillment of prophecy for this year in my life. Thank you for divine favor and divine grace. In Jesus' name. Amen. Now, because you came out, I will allow you the privilege. Others may not. You will wait. I will allow you the privilege of eating the flesh. Divine ability to save to the utmost everything that is yours without condemnation. So eat now and be set free of every incubance in Jesus' name. You may eat of that flesh. Just the flesh. Don't drink of the blood yet. Just eat of the flesh. My father, by this, hallow them and take the glory. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name. I want you to rise up and go back to your seat with the blood. Hold the blood in your hands because we're going to finish the rest together. Just hold the blood in your hands. Father, this is your flesh that was broken for us. And today, as we eat, let the ordinances of heaven take over our lives. Let the shout of the king go before us. And by the shout of your voice, let every appointment that belongs to us come to us. Today, as we eat, we renew the covenant of life for this year. Amen. Dead will not enter our lives. Amen. Lord, you heard me tell your children, dead will not come to them. Amen. Today, cancel the covenant of death. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. So today, we eat that we might become your own. Amen. By the ordinance of your flesh, let the spirit of adoption be perfected. Thank you for hearing us. In Jesus' name. The rest of you have not eaten. Just before you eat, is there any special thing you want to ask the Lord? Just mention it in one second. And as you mention it, begin to eat. And for everyone... Tell the Lord, adopt my pasture and fill it. Create wealth for me. Uncommon wealth. Create riches for me. Uncommon riches. Break the laws of nature. And open ornaments for me that I have never known. Great divine favor. 
wear me back my crown before the fall. I receive this grace by the entitlement and enablement of the Lord God Almighty. In the name of God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, in Jesus' name. You may eat of the flesh now. Can you say with me, Heavenly Father? I invoke the spirit of the Messiah to open the secret place of your power to my life and unlock now all the blessings of the Lord, the riches of the Lord from the hidden places, the promotions of the Lord for my life, the portions of my destiny, divine and perfect health, divine and perfect health, and the spirit of protection and defense, open now to my life and to all that are under me. I receive this grace by the blood of the Lamb, by the blood of the Lamb, this month is the month of, of power and the month of greatness. I receive both greatness and power by the drinking of this blood. That everywhere I enter, a place will be made for me and a blessing will follow me. I receive the hand of the Lord to promote me now as I give you glory. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. I receive with thanksgiving the hallowing of my life to fulfill divine purposes. In Jesus' name. Amen. You may drink of the blood, please. Can you begin to give thanks? Just bless the Lord. Give him glory. And give him praise. Just exalt him. Exalt him. Thank you, Father. We bless you, Lord. You are holy. Holy Lord, and forever you are God, and forever you are God. We, we bless, bless you, Lord, you are holy. Holy Lord, and forever you are God. Hallelujah, 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 forever you are God. Hallelujah, 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 and forever you are God. I want to be seated quickly because I'm done. I don't want to waste, take more of our time. Listen, go back and watch your life reset. And as the Lord begins to make you find favor, I told you, in these two months, God is going to disguise under other things to speak for you. If you can release him to the tape, release him to it. It's our first meeting in Abuja this year.
to start to flag off every month once I'll be here for this meeting. At the beginning of the month, between first and third. So if they have the handbills, they will let you, they will pass all the dates of the year for this meeting. Or please, you go into our, uh, 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 our website, throneroomministries.org, and then search for it. You will find it somewhere for Abuja, the times of my coming. And every time I have kept to it, uh, most times I even change my program overseas to fly back for it so that Nigeria can be sustained. And please, like I said in Benin, if the Lord is commanding you, that was for that church, to get us an open tent, it's not a closed one. We will put it outside there because we can't keep putting chairs outside for people. Um, just before I release us under God, I want us to give thanks for just one of our members that has been outside the country for a while. Uh, she had specially requested and I obliged and forgot until somebody reminded me that I had made a promise. And I keep my vows. Uh, and it's just for five minutes. Uh, where is Kate? Uh -huh. You know the mask. We have to look for you people. Uh, can you just, just for one moment and we'll pray for you. Give her the mic quickly. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. It's good to be back in Nigeria. Amen. You never know what you have until you lose it. <laughs> you are in Nigeria. You don't know what God has given you. I have stayed. I went for three years was three years government ordained but when we got there God ordained four and a half years I want to truly bless God for his faithfulness for grace unspeakable for things I never imagined for keeping me alive I never slept in hospital for one day not my children not anybody he kept my home defended his covenant I truly want to say God is faithful he has been God in all the days I dwelt in that land. I found grace, not only with men, I found with God. I found grace beyond what my life can ever express. Today on this hallowed altar, I came here on the 5th of September in 2017 and we prayed together. I said I was leaving. They didn't know where I was going, but God knew. Like the, the song, songwriter said, the Lord know the way through the wilderness. All I have to do is to follow him. The days when serpents were in my house, God defended his covenant. They didn't beat anybody. I remember dad came all through. One day, he, the first time he came, he anointed the whole house and kept praying at the door and prayed. One time the serpents were there at the door. We crossed the serpent. He never beat anybody. I want to say God is faithful. He's a covenant keeper. He never break his oaths. He said my covenant and my oath will I not break. For truly in my life he has kept it. I want to say God is faithful. I thank God for daddy. The last day I was to leave he traveled. He was not in the country. And the Lord says step into the house. And I went there. Unknown to me he had arrived. And... I told him, I said, I was going to leave. He said, how did you know? You followed me from the airport. I said, no, I didn't know. But the Holy Spirit said, go now. And I obeyed. And he prayed for me. Every word of prophecy he prayed came to pass. In Tanzania, I found a family that they didn't want me to go. But I told them the seasons have come to return back home. I bless God for every day and every hour. There's a song in Kiswahili, Daddy, I want to sing <laughs> Kila siku na kila saa waminifu bwana kila siku kila siku na kila saa 
up on our feet. As many of you will know. But this one is peculiar. It's connected to a vow. Uh, before she left, there were cries about this miracle. And when it happened, there was a vow attached to it. That Lord, if you will take me and bring me back safely, and you will keep my house at home intact, and you will keep my children, and you will prosper us and keep all of us prosperous. I'm coming back to say thank you. You won't understand. Those snakes went there literally to kill her. And they didn't find her. And they started dying at the door. Uh, that is why I told you it's not your portion to die. I don't care how many dreams you see. If God wants to kill you, he won't tell you. Except if you are a sinner. Then he will tell you, I will kill you. Otherwise, if you are a righteous person, he will just tell you, my son, prepare your house. If I'm coming back tomorrow to carry you away. I told my king, within three years, go prepare your house. Set them. God will have taken you away, but set them. You have three years. Within three years, he's coming back to take you home. My king looked at me, my paramount ruler. We just finished his burial a month, or, I mean a week or two ago. I said, go pack your load, write your will, call your lawyers. You will have gone now, but God, because of your heart, God is giving you a chance to put things back together, reset the throne, and get ready. Because the next time God comes, he won't tell me. And God ensured that it was the day I traveled out. They came looking for me. <laughs> And Baba had always wished that. He said, look, he told me privately, he said, look, the day I want to go, if I'm not going in your hands, I want to go in your hospital. He has all the big hospitals in Abuja and in Israel. He goes to. They finished treating him last year in Abuja. For three months he was there. He came back home. And then he just went to my hospital, laid down for one night, and decided to leave the day I was arriving in America. As I landed, the daughter called me. Baba just left us now. We were looking for you. Where, where were you? I said, because I told him that the day he goes, I won't be there. I won't be there because I won't allow it. I will find myself begging. Let him stay a little more. So I won't be there. I told my father, the day he goes, I won't be there to stop him. But when I'm there, it means he's not going. So anytime my father dis starts wanting to go home, eternally, I step in there and it's over. And the last time he came back, he started crying and told me that I should stop this nonsense. The man is very old. He wants to go. He says he's rest. 
He wept. He said, I'm not blessing you for bringing me back. Because I went there and they told me that uh, you have not permitted me yet. I'm telling you what my father told me. He said, you will stop me. He said, you throw, you, your whole throne room people came here and prayed. And truly at the time when he was in a coma off, some guys, I don't know whether it's Austin and Co. Gaya, they gathered themselves by that bed and said, my friend, come back. Our papa never allow it. He came back. God has kept the kind of covenants and honored us as we have never known. That's why I told you this year, stop dreaming about death. If you are eager to go, come. I will pour you oil. You can go. I mean it. I will escort you to go and leave us alone and stop disturbing us. But if you want to stay, open your mouth and God will defend your life. I didn't hear somebody say amen. amen. There are many things she cannot say. She just cannot say. She just cannot say. Because it is not proper for her to say. But Father, in your awesomeness, your daughter has kept her vows. Today I ask that you will take the glory. You will take the praise. You will take the adoration. Now that you have brought her back to Nigeria, crown her life with glory. Amen. Whatever needs redemption, redeem it. Amen. And all the large grounds you have ordained for her to manage, I anoint her to the new large grounds. Amen. In the name of God the Father, Amen. God the Son, Amen. God the Holy Spirit, Amen. let your thanksgiving Become a living testament before the Lord for you in Jesus' name. And the people of the Lord say, Amen. The Lord anoint the earth to follow you wherever you enter and to plant you in a new place that the name of the Lord himself shall name. So shall your blessing follow you. In Jesus' name, you may rise. Can we just take our offerings? Let's bring out a seed to the Lord. Let's bless the Lord and close. Let's just bless the Lord and close. Thank you, Father. If you have the program for this year, I hope you have passed it across to the people. I hope you have passed it across. If you have not, then go to the internet and pick them. The next meeting here is March 1st or 2nd? 3rd. Okay, it's March 3rd. Please write it. March 3rd is our next meeting. Father, by this seed, we release your voice to speak in heaven and on earth. And your spirit to defend every word and every life. By this seed, mark us out. By this seed, glorify your name. Thank you for hearing us. We enter into our harvest. Our grounds are open. Fill them up. Every month we will bring the testimonies of feelings and new dimensions. In Jesus' name. Amen. They will take a song. You will just drop your seed. And shalom. We will see third March. By God's grace. Yes, there is a PFN meeting taking place February 7th. All of us are supposed to be there. Let's join them by 3 p.m. at the Economical Center. It's going to be a prayer for this nation. A prayer for the redemption of this nation for God to interfere. Uh, 3 p.m. We should all endeavor to be there. Bless the Lord, oh my soul, oh my soul, worship his soul in name. Sing like never before, oh my soul, 
worship your holy name. Say, bless the Lord, oh my soul, say love, oh my soul, worship me so. Hallelujah, and I see hallelujah. 